Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are safe. I hope you're having a great day. We are here with Andrea Ball, and we're here to talk all about getting started with Facebook ads. So now I have to say that I am personally really excited about this webinar. Andrea, I don't know if I told you this, but I actually have a little bit of a history with uh, Facebook ads. I was in college when Facebook ads first became a thing. Um, and I was really gosh, excited about that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> so that's another thing I know we have in common. So <laughs> I actually, yeah. So I, um, I actually started an agency with a bunch of friends. We started doing Facebook ads for local small businesses. And till this day, I have to say it was probably the best fun I ever had just because it's such an exciting environment to be working in. It's always changing so many opportunities. Um, so I'm really excited for this webinar today. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us. We know you are super busy. Uh, for you folks joining us, Andrea is a superstar when it comes to Facebook ads. She knows all about Facebook and all about how small businesses can leverage Facebook to grow their reach, to grow their audience, to grow their revenue. And he, she is here today with us to talk to us about how you guys can do just that. And we're gonna get some great practical uh, tips. Uh, we only have an hour, so we're gonna try and get started as soon as possible. I see more and more of you guys are joining. So give us a high five in the comments. Uh, we're gonna do an interactive session. So feel free to drop us a question. You can ask Andrea anything throughout the presentation. Some of the questions might be addressed during the presentation and uh, some of them we might leave for the end. But again, feel free to drop us a question at any time and we will do our very best to get to all you guys. So Andrea, should we get started? I know we have some poll questions for the audience. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's uh, let's get to those poll questions and we can, and actually, since we're talking about how to ask a question, here's the information about how to ask a question on the, in the, uh, in GoToWebinar, just so people know where it's at. It's on that right side of your screen and you, it might be collapsed. It might be uh, something that you have to pull over and then you can ask a question there. But let's let's get to the poll questions. Yeah, so I'd like to ask uh, the folks watching us here today, what is their kind of level of familiarity with uh, Facebook ads? You know, do you guys have any experience? Uh, with Facebook ads, is it, some, is it something you've kind of done before? Um, I'm going to launch the question right now so you guys can go ahead and vote. Tell us, you know, maybe some of you have never really used Facebook ads before. Uh, some of you might have given it a try, but really looking to learn more. And uh, some of you guys might have already, you know, really gained some great experience with Facebook ads. You consider yourself masters, uh, but still looking to learn something new because, you know, there's always more to learn. And, you know, Andrea, that Facebook is so dynamic. It's like sometimes overnight, the whole thing kind of changes, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> It's hard to keep up. Yeah, so I see you guys are answering. I'm going to give you another second to go ahead and tell us. Uh, looks like the large majority of the audience have had some experience, uh, a little bit of experience with Facebook ads, but still really looking to learn more, which I think is great. Um, so thanks for, um, thank you for uh, voting. I'm going to close the poll. And uh, we do have another question for you guys. And I'm going to, Andrea, this is a great question for you too. Uh, I'd love to hear what goal you're trying to achieve by running Facebook ads, because, you know, there's different things that you can be doing. Um, so I'm going to launch our second poll for today right now. And that is, you know, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, it just looks like it's taking a second to load. But in the meantime, Andrea, I'm going to ask you, what do you normally come across? Because I know that you run a lot of Facebook campaigns for different types of businesses. Yeah. What is usually the objective of these campaigns? Yes, yeah. I mean, usually everyone jumps right to, I want sales, right? I want sales. Some people are, do want the leads coming in, but you know, um, I find that sometimes it is a little bit of a challenge to go straight for the sales on Facebook because we're not targeting by people who are searching on something immediately. You might be targeting a little bit differently. There might be a little bit of education that's involved. Now, that being said, Facebook can be great for sales to um, to to call a cold audience who doesn't know anything about you. Um, but typically, for a little bit higher cost product, sometimes it's better to kind of nurture that a little bit and educate people and go for the lead first and then get to that get to that sale. And we'll be talking about uh, both of those things in this presentation. 
Sounds great. So I, uh, the poll question is now live. I see many of you have voted. If you haven't voted yet, I'll leave it open for a couple more seconds. Basically, we're asking, you know, what kind of goals are you looking to achieve with your Facebook campaigns? Are you looking at getting prospects familiar with your brand? Are you more about capturing leads? Uh, maybe you're actually about, you know, selling products and services online. And then uh, I see quite a few of you are also looking into just kind of getting your content. You invest so much time in getting, building great content and you want to just yeah. get more eyeballs and that content. So yeah, yeah. so it's actually it looks huge. like a pretty even distribution here. Nice. We have, uh, yeah, lots of people that are um, looking to sell their products and services online and quite a few looking to capture leads and then still a nice bunch um, interested in getting eyeballs on their <laughs> content and some looking uh, to just get some brand familiarity. So Great. with that in mind, uh, let's move on. So Andrea, let's take it away. The, the, yeah. I'm handing over the virtual microphone to you. Okay. And uh, just a quick reminder, guys, you are welcome to ask a question at any time. Uh, just head over to the uh, little box over there. If the panel is collapsed, you can uncollapse it with the little uh, orange arrow and then just type your question in. Your questions will be visible to, the, to us only, so no one else will be seeing them. Uh, and again, feel free to ask us anything and let's go. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to talk about what types of ads to run, including the lead generation versus conversion ads. And I'll also touch on boosted posts. We're going to talk about how to best target and retarget for the leads and sales, because that's really important in that, in that phase. And then how to follow up with those leads most effectively so that you're maximizing your ad spend. And I'm also going to touch on some of the big changes that are coming with Apple, the Apple iOS update and how it's going to affect small businesses. What are you going to need to do now to put in place things like that that will uh, that, that you have to consider as you design your campaign. But before we get started, I'm just going to share a little bit about my story. I know that not everyone on the call might know me, so I'm going to just uh, tell you a little bit about my background. This was me about 10 years ago. I had been laid off from my job. I was scared. I was broke. I was drunk. And I was growing out my facial hair. So, so I did what anyone in that situation would do, is I put on a wig. I started a blog as Grandma Mary's social media edutainer. I worked my butt off and got a book deal. And now, with the help of Facebook ads, this is me today. I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I've had a good waxing. <laughs> and, and I, and I, I just have to say, Andrea, I don't know if you're seeing the comments, but the audience is on the floor. <laughs> I'm getting lots of LOLs in the comment section. <laughs> and now, you know, the, the other benefit of Facebook ads is they give you more time. I now have time to hand dry my laundry on the beach. So there we go. <laughs> so that can be you. With, <laughs> but that, I just another little tidbit about me is I do stand up comedy. I love I love having fun. As you can see, I did start my blog as Grandma Mary's social media edutainer, and so I like to add humor and fun into everything I do because we've got to laugh, right? Especially especially these days. So a little bit more about me, really quickly. I have written. Uh, three editions of uh, Facebook Marketing All-in-One for Dummies, along with Amy Porterfield and Phyllis Kerr. I uh, wrote F Facebook Ads Made Simple. I've been helping run uh, face clients for nine years or whenever Facebook Ads started, I think nine, ten years. i got to update that slide. It's been a while. And um, I've been, uh, what I love about Facebook Ads so much, and like you, Rachel, Rachel, we were talking about your name pronunciation. <laughs> And now I'm getting it all funky. <laughs> Rachel, like you, I, I have so much fun with Facebook ads because they're so trackable. And I love the fact that I can track that I have impacted the bottom line of my clients, earning over $2 million in trackable sales in the last, last couple of years. And I think that's actually higher um, now since we've been, uh, since I made this a little bit ago. But um, yeah, so I I do I speak around the world and uh, not so much now. We're doing webinars webinars, but that's fun too. All right, so let's get. I just have to say this was my absolute. 
favorite introduction. And I'm so happy because remember I asked you, I was like, should I do the introduction? Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm so happy you introduced yourself because there is no <laughs> way it would have been as entertaining. I, I liked it. I like to have a little fun, so it makes me laugh. <laughs> That's my whole goal. <laughs> so let's talk about some rules with Facebook ads and some things that I have seen over and over for, that are going to make a big difference for you with Facebook ads. Rule number one is you've got to have a good product. You've got to have a good product, and that includes lead magnets and your actual product. You know, I don't care if you're targeting bacon lovers, the squeeze bacon is not going to work. And I don't know what the heck you would even target with the sauna pants. Um, and <laughs> it, are these real products? I have yes. to ask. Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. Oh, they no. are. And the picnic oh. pants, nothing can save this. I can't, if you're targeting people who like picnic picnics and hate fashion, maybe, but mm -hmm. you really got to have a good product, a good lead magnet to get results. Um, but the biggest rule, this is really, is this is really one of the biggest rules with Facebook ads, is just always be testing. So many people don't test enough. And Facebook found that the top performing ad accounts created and tested 11 times more creative than less successful accounts. So that's really key with that. Um, and, you know, that doesn't mean that you have to come up with 500 different versions of ads, there are ways to systematically test that will really dramatically improve how you do. And I find uh, when I look at people's ad accounts that they are often not testing enough. They try one or two things and then they say Facebook ads doesn't work for them. So let, let's dive into what types of Facebook ads that you should be running. And a big mistake I see is that a lot of people are only using boosted posts. I find that boosted posts are still okay. Some people say never use a boosted post. I still use them myself, but they they really are about 10% of the uh, of your ad campaign plan compared to the other types of ads you should be running. And the other thing that is, um, you know, as you mentioned, Facebook ads changes all the time. Well, boosted posts not long ago just changed as well. And Facebook will automatically optimize your ads. And sometimes that's not good because they're choosing an optimization that isn't actually what you want. So you have to make sure that you've got your settings right. Even if you are using boosted posts, take a look at how they're optimizing it. Take a look at where the ad is going to be placed because sometimes Instagram placement or, or story placement isn't right for your ad or your audience that you are targeting. So take a look at those settings and um, make sure you're also adjusting the pixel because it kind of now defaults to not tracking with your pixel. So make sure you're checking all those adjustments. And what I find is that Facebook booster posts are just not always the best ROI. It's really kind of more of a light advertising and they encourage you to do it all the time. It's an easy way, it's an easy button to click. You know, it feels like the easy button, but sometimes it's just wasted ad spend because there's more advanced techniques in the ads manager. I find that it's really boosted posts are great to re-engage my current audience. So what I'm doing with someone had talked or people had talked about getting more eyeballs on their content. What I do with a boosted post is I will post it and then I will do all the settings the, that I the way I want and make sure it's directing people to that content with the with the button. And then I will use a retargeting audience for that boosted post where I'm only targeting people who have been to my website, who have uh, engaged with my page in the past. And that is really get in front, getting in front of that warm audience who is more likely to click on your ad anyway and getting you typically better results with that. So that's the way I use boosted posts. I love um, that. I think yeah. it's so great that, yeah, I mean, because Facebook, you know, we always think of Facebook as a way to acquire new leads. And here it's also a tool that we can use as a, re you know, for retention to generate, right. keep business, keep our audience engaged. Yep, exactly. And sometimes people think I spend a lot of money on Facebook ads because they see me a lot. But when you're targeting that small uh, retargeting audience that you've got with your, with your content, what's happening is people are just seeing you. Uh, a lot more and you're not having to spend a lot. 
but I want to talk for sure about how they're not always they're not optimized for sales a lot of times. Um, this was a client I worked with where they had an event uh, back when events were happening, <laughs> and they were doing a lot of booster posts, a lot of some video video um, promotions for their event, and they just were not getting any purchases. And they had spent a good amount of money. And I came in and we uh, did a conversion ad instead and started generating sales to their events right away. So when you optimize your ads correctly, you can get way better results. So let's talk about the two types of ads that will get better results. Uh, <laughs> these are the two I use most often. Occasionally I'm also using a traffic ad, but the two ad types of optimizations that I use in the ads manager are the lead generation ad or the conversion ad. And those little, those two pieces are a little bit confusing because people think, oh, I want lead generation. I'm going to choose that objective. But that is the, the type of ad that happens all on Facebook and requires the lead generation form that pops up. If you are trying to get lead generation, but you ha are, you have a lead form on your website, then you actually need the conversion ad and that requires the Facebook pixel and it also uh, you also need to make sure that you've got that Facebook pixel set up correctly. So let's talk about the conversion ad. This is an example and this is actually an Instagram example. I, I was advertising on Instagram and that's what the ad looks like and on Instagram it's very image heavy there. And so I've got the text on the ad, it's image itself. And there's more text down below as well. But people would click on that ad on Instagram that that would send them to my website. And the website has the Facebook pixel installed on that website where they can go and put their name and email to get this download. When they do that, they are then redirected to a thank you page that is also on my website that then has the Facebook pixel, but it also includes a little extra bit of code in that Facebook pixel that, is, that says that that is a lead because they have now given me their email address on, that, on the previous page. And I know for sure that the, when they land on that thank you page, I have that lead information and they can now download the promised uh, downloadable thing that I have here. So that's how a conversion ad works. And you've got to make sure that your setup is correct and that you're then optimizing around that lead. You can choose in your Facebook ad area to say, I'm going to choose a conversion ad and optimize around a lead because I've installed that lead pixel on that final thank you page. And, that, and now you're tracking not just the fact that people got to your website, but the fact that they got they became a lead. And that is super, super powerful because what Facebook then does is they, are, they then learn the type of people who are more likely to opt into leads or the type of people that are opting into leads. And they're optimizing your ad to show it to the right people and to, and to then also track that through the funnel. So, it's it's an amazing amazing product that Facebook has with with these ads and they're just really smart. You know, I talk to people, I tell people all the time, Facebook is kind of a creepy creepy place that knows a lot about us and but as marketers, we get to benefit from that. <laughs> so here's an example of a webinar. And this is a pretty simple example because it is just an ad going to a Zoom webinar uh, registration page and then there's a thank you page. And you can do this same type of registration or same type of um, ad with any type of, well, not any, with most types of webinar software. So as long as you can install the Facebook pixel within that webinar software, which a lot of webinar softwares do allow, you can then track the fact that they become a lead. So again, we could have a conversion ad that goes from the ad, this is a face on, ad on Facebook, goes to the webinar registration page, and then there's a thank you page where you can track all the way through and see which audiences, which ads are giving you the best cost per lead. So super powerful tactic. 
So again, some gr some other examples of some great freebies here for a variety of businesses. Now, I sometimes people ask, oh, do does Facebook work better with B two B or B two C? And I've I've done all types of businesses, and Facebook and Instagram ads work great for so many different types of businesses. It's not it's not just B2B, not just B2C. There are some differences in how it works and maybe cost per lead and things like that. And that's even within different niches as well. So that, you know, that's something you have to consider and something that you baseline for yourself when you start this testing to see, okay, how am I getting, how am I getting leads into my business? How much is it costing me? And then can I be profitable with that particular lead cost going forward? So these, some of these examples, like, um, you know, leads into maybe a, a like a seven day, the seven days um, challenge, then leads into working one on one or in a group training. The legacy planning webinar can then lead into working with that uh, retirement investment firm. The, you know, the cash flow CEO dashboard might lead into a course where you can then promote the course. So all of these are leading into your sales cycle. This is, these are great examples. I love these. This is, you yeah. know, to me, this is the biggest difference between Facebook ads and PPC Google ads where, you know, right. when someone's searching Google, they have this buyer intent. They want right. to buy something. They're looking right. for something. On Facebook, people are just browsing. You know, right. your ads are going to show up among pictures of their friends and pictures of their friends' cats. So these are great ideas for easing your audience into the buyer cycle. So you're not exactly. saying, all right, buy this now. You're saying, you know, download this ebook or join the free webinar or join the free challenge or whatever right. it is. This is great. These are some yeah. really great examples here. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and people want to, you know, give it a try, get to know you. I think that's a big thing as well. They get to know how you work and get to know you a little bit more and then they're then they're uh ready to to make an investment with you. So, this is a uh an example of a local business and this is a lead generation ad. And so, we talked a little bit about the conversion ads um that were happened on your website and required the pixel. The lead generation ad is the other objective that I use a lot and um, and that happens on Facebook where they don't go anywhere. So the ad is uh, there and talks about getting a free dance lesson. And so they, they decide that they wanna click on that sign up button and when they click on it, the pop-up form comes that says, give us your name and email and phone number and we'll get you signed up for this free lesson. And what happens on the back end then is we, in this particular case, we have the lead automatically being sent over to them and we'll talk more about the follow-up piece of it because you wanna follow up as quickly as possible, um, but they have the lead coming over to them so that they can make a phone call and book that appointment on when they're gonna get their free lesson. And you can, with a lead generation fan, uh, form, you can also redirect to a website after they fill out the form if you wanted someone to get more information about you or something like that. This could also be another great idea for this is if you have a coupon. Maybe you have a coupon deal and it's an ad to get the coupon, the lead form pops up, and then they get redirected to where they could possibly download that coupon, for example. So there's lots of possibilities with lead generation ads. Um, you know, on, on how you might use them. But the good thing is that the, it's automatically filled out, that is automatically populated from, for, with the client's information. So with their name from their Facebook name, their phone number that they've used for the mobile number on Facebook and their email address. Uh, so that way they don't have to worry about typing and it's pretty easy just to hit yes, hit next and say, yeah, I want this, I want this thing. So a lot of times it reduces some friction with entering and getting that lead. And then what happens is that lead is actually in the back end of your Facebook page in the lead forms uh, library under publishing tools. So if you don't have something automated, you can go back and manually go and look at um, what leads are there. You can see the fact in the report that you're getting leads and then you can manually check in. 
the um, the other thing that I wanted to kind of mention with this, and I'm going to do a little poll question here in just a second. Um, Rachel, I forgot to tell you that I I'm adding an old uh, my own informal poll. This is kind of fun, but let's go for it. Yeah. So one of the things with uh, with lead generation ads is because you're not sending someone to a website where you've got a, maybe a lot more information, you might want to have some longer text on a lead generation ad because they're kind of getting all the information about the service or the product or the, the lead magnet just from the ad or the lead form pop up. So here's an example of uh, carpet cleaning, one free room that they were offering and they can do, uh, they had the longer text and we actually put in the testimonials as well. That way their people were kind of feeling like, hey, this is a, a good company. I'm gonna give them my information. And so then we were testing different creative with that because it's a local audience we were kind of targeting the same type of people and the big difference with a local audience would be possibly in different creatives and how they might respond so i want to get the audience's uh ideas here on which of these three ads did the best the puppy the before and after or the video demo so we tested these three audiences and there was a clear winner by far. I would love to hear what you guys think. And I can't see the chat, uh, Rachel, so you can just tell me oh, what you're seeing. I'll let you know in real time. Um, yeah. We've got Joanne saying video demo. Uh, David is saying the dog for sure. The doggo for sure. Um, <laughs> Sheila is saying the before after. Laura is saying the puppy. Um, we have Karima, Kevin, Pat, Larry, um, Haley saying the video and then Julia saying dog, Lisa saying puppy. So it's a good mix of answers. Good, yeah, good I mix. Puppy. What, what do you think, Rachel? I would say, I know video is always super engaging, but I don't yeah. know. I can just say that if it was me, I would definitely respond best to the puppy. <laughs> yeah. I thought that too. And this is what happens. I guess wrong all the time. I thought the puppy was going to just really crush it, but the puppy actually didn't do too well. Unfortunately, it Ooh. was the video demo hands down by far um, that just really rocked the, the uh, lead cost here. We got the best lead cost with the video demo. And the interesting thing about this video demo is it's super low tech. All it was is someone's camera just doing the video and it was very short. It was someone's uh, phone taken on a phone. Um, it wasn't professionally edited. It was really casual. It was just a very short video demo and that one. So, you know, that's why we test. If I had just tried the puppy, I would think that our lead cost would be really high. And I would think, well, that's maybe isn't going to work. But then when we tested all three, we got to we got to find that we got way better lead costs and a, a clear winner with that video demo. So wow. you have to test for yourself, for sure. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about targeting your ad. Uh, for Like I mentioned, for local cam campaigns, you're gonna have the same or similar audiences, but you might vary the creative. So for example, we might have, like if we were targeting, um, in the top example, we were targeting parents in a local area, and then we just had some images, some video, different things like that. In the uh, in the example below, we were testing women by themselves and men and women, and we were trying couples and singles. And so we were seeing exactly which got the best results there. Um, but if you are, if you're, um, if you're going beyond the lo a local audience, if you're targeting maybe more countrywide or specific countries, then what I would say is that you can go dive into more uh, detailed targeting and keywords that you're gonna add. And you're gonna, um, you're gonna be able to target the fans of other pages. You can target by more general interests. A lot of times you can target by job titles. You can target by, um, by uh, employers sometimes, things like that. So it's really amazing what's available in here. You just have to start typing and see what comes up as a match because not every fan page is gonna come up as a match for your targeting. Sometimes I have seen small fan pages come up, but typically I see 50,000 and above 
are the types of fan pages that come up for matches. And that even that being said, sometimes I'm trying to target a page that has 100,000 fans and it doesn't come up. So it can be hit and miss. There's no real rhyme or reason why Facebook uh, puts, puts one fan page or keyword in there versus another. And we don't always exactly know how Facebook builds those keywords. And, and it doesn't break out the testing individually in our reports. So we actually have to group our testing um, a little bit more specifically ourselves. So for example, I would not dump every single keyword that you can think of into one ad campaign. I would test them by group. So I might target some fan pages, some job titles, and then maybe more a more general interest keyword there and test those separately. We have a, um, I know there's probably going to be a lot of questions about targeting and I guess yeah. uh, we probably can't go and in, dive into every single example, but maybe we'll just take one just as like sure. an exercise. Uh, yeah. We have a question from Jeff who is saying that he, um, he uses Facebook ads for, for, for employee, for finding employees. So he's looking oh, right. for uh, team members to join his team on Facebook. Um, so I think, you know, you mentioned job titles that to me yeah. sounds like great way to target potential workers. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, the, there are some restrictions with Facebook ads, and that includes employment ads. So employment ads, uh, credit ads, and housing ads all have some additional restrictions on them. Um, and that is because uh, they, they don't want um, there to be discriminatory practices in how you're targeting. So unfortunately with employment ads, you can only, you have to keep the targeting wide open and only be, target by a, um, a, an area range. So what you can do with that is really focus on appealing to that right potential job uh, applicant with the text in the ad. So make sure that you're really good diving into what is expected of the employee, who you're looking for, things like that. Because un unfortunately with employment ads, we can't, we can't do a lot of uh, keyword targeting there. We just have to, and even age range sometimes you can't, so you have to keep it pretty open. And I imagine you're probably looking, you might be looking in a, um, in a more local area perhaps. And so that can be okay. If you're searching countrywide, um, it, I would say Facebook ads might be a little more challenging. Maybe you pinpoint a few different areas that you're trying to um, connect with, where you found employees coming from in the past, uh, things like that. But um, employment is a little more challenging. I like I like uh, job title targeting when I'm when I'm working with a B two B client who it knows that hey I'm trying to appeal to the human resources department or I, I wanna work with CEOs for this coaching I have. So I'm gonna target CEOs, C-level people, CFOs, you can target by job title in that way. Um, so that's usually where I think job titles come in a little bit, a little bit better. That's some interesting insights. Yeah, yeah. we have, we have uh, David here who mentioned that he's also uh, running some campaigns for a moving company. So I guess that's, a, that's an area where there's some restrictions as well. Okay. Yeah. It depends on, uh, yeah, it depends. I mean, if your real estate has restrictions, um, if it's a moving company, it, it probably shouldn't have restrictions, but there, um, it depends on kind of what you're doing with that possibly. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about like some of the, I just want to give you a quick tip on local campaigns versus um, and targeting because I want to make sure that you don't narrow too far because sometimes what I see is that people want to do a local campaign but they want to put in a lot of keywords in there but um, if you if you do that your audience is going to be really small and your budget might be overspending to show the ad too frequently to people and annoy them. I think we've all seen that where every time you you do something, the ad keeps showing to you. And I'm like, those people are spending too much for the size of audience they chose. So I like to watch my frequency number to make sure it um, is under three or four typically for a cold audience. If you're retargeting, that frequency can go up because your, your warm audience doesn't mind seeing you as much and 
it, it especially if it's a shorter promotion maybe or a shorter time frame it's okay to have that frequency go a little bit higher so let's talk about retargeting uh, I definitely find that this is just one of the great things about Facebook ads it, because you can retarget your website visitors your engage like people who watched your videos on your Facebook page your fans your Instagram followers and you know even more like just it's really cool that all the things you can retarget in there and then you can also target your email list so say you're having trouble with your open rates maybe you're not getting as many people seeing your emails well you can couple that campaign that you're doing with a retargeting Facebook ad campaign where you upload your email list into your Facebook audiences area and build an audience out of the people who have subscribed to your email newsletter and that way you're making sure that you're getting seen through one of those channels uh, the retargeting your website visitors does require you to put the Facebook pixel on your website to to make sure that's that's actually happening there and the great thing about the retargeting is that you can spend less money on your ads because now you're reaching a smaller group and and if you if you have a real small group of website visitors you may want to make sure that you're combining all these retargeting audiences into one target so that you've got a little bit more visibility there and you're you can spend a little bit but the great thing is you don't have to spend a lot on Facebook ads to get seen by the people who are more likely to do business with you or your previous customers it's great it's great so now let's talk about following up with your leads because this is huge and we're going to dive a little bit more into this at the end um, with rachel who talks about who's going to talk a lot more about this but i want to kind of mention some of the things that i've seen with this is making sure that you're connecting right away with these leads is really huge because you all know we we sign up for things we forget right away, we forget you know that we did anything so if you can give them if you get a lead if you can give them a call right away or get them to take another step right away with you that is going to be key they're going to be engaged they're going to be a little bit further down the path into possibly working with you so what i like to make sure people do is get the you know go from the the ad they land on a landing page and if they sign up to get something then they can get it right away there's you know i like that instant availability if you can um if you can do it i know some people talk about the double opt-in and stuff like that. Uh, if you're familiar with that tactic, I do find that that just decreases the fact that the number of people who actually complete that second step. And I know in certain countries it is sort of mandatory that you've got that double opt-in. So if if you don't need it, I would say making make sure you get connected right away, get them some uh, some some information from you really quickly. And then we'll talk more about following up with leads at the end. Yeah, yeah, this is a good opportunity to remind everyone that uh, this webinar was brought to you by Visita. Uh, Visita is an app for small business owners, and we do exactly what um, Andrea is talking about. We help you guys follow up and stay in touch and stay engaged with your leads once you've invested so much money and time in getting them. And I will be talking yeah. more about that uh, just in a little bit. We do have another question about uh, lead follow-up uh, that came in a little while ago, and I was actually saving it for this part of the presentation. Um, we have a question about lead follow-up. Um, there's, um, I, uh, I, I actually, sorry, I had it on my screen. Now it's just gone in the whole feed of questions, but I do remember seeing it. There was a question about, um, you know, if you have any tips about how to kind of capture lead, how to kind of make the most of leads, not let them sort of fizzle out. Uh, I know some of you, you know, some people kind of sometimes get these leads signing up and then they try calling once or twice and no one's picking up the phone. They get people, you know, kind of interested and then the deal kind of falls apart before it really formalizes. Do you have any right. tips for anyone that's experiencing that? Yeah, right. And I think the thing is you do have to, um, you do have to realize that that is going to happen that people are you're you know not every lead is going to be perfect and um i think for sure 
sometimes people opt in and then they don't um they don't even they've even forgotten that they did that so it's it is it is hard for sure um one of the things that um we have i i've had my clients do is if they do get the name and the phone number um and the email they follow up in three different ways they uh connect with them on email they try calling them and then they might try texting as well just a super friendly text that really kind of says hey just wanted to check in i know you signed up for this and want to make sure that we get you the information for it and you know that that can i know that some people don't appreciate text messages or a more direct message like that um there's other things there's other types of ads that can be interesting as well including like messenger ads where you're having a more converse, you know more of a conversation with people through a chat that can be super helpful um but i think the other thing that a lot of my clients do is we're really tracking the like how many leads led to the next step and and that way that allows you to see what price point you need to hit in the lead phase so that you know that you're going to be profitable on the sales side because if you have you know x number of people signing up to watch a webinar for example and that webinar will then lead to like a booked call and if you if you know how many people then are actually getting on that call and then how many people are signing up for the service so you got to track all all every step of the way so you know what numbers you need to hit at each level because what we can say is oh if we're getting more than $12 per lead and this is a this is a b2b um thing so t you know sometimes those are a little bit more expensive if we uh we we know that we have to hit $12 a lead or the rest of the funnel is not going to work out so you know, tracking those no numbers and knowing those numbers will help you make better decisions on the front end where you're doing that lead generation. So, hope that was helpful. Absolutely, thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, all right, so now let's talk about um, Facebook is changing. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not news, it's always changing. This actually, this change that's coming down is one of the mo most major changes that I've seen in um, probably, yeah, probably in a long time. So this is a big change. And what's happening is that uh, the Apple iOS update, I'm sure you've all, you probably all heard of it by now. If you haven't, it's, it's uh, right in the middle of happening. It still hasn't like totally flipped over. I know I've heard different reports about whether it's starting to change or not, but um, I, I've heard mostly that it's it hasn't actually happened yet. But what's happening is that uh, Apple the Apple update is allowing people to opt out of tracking, and it is something that they have to opt out of from a prompt on their screen. So when they say don't uh, ask app not to track, what that means is Facebook is not going to be able to track with the pixel. And the Facebook pixel is one of the most powerful things about Facebook. So it is a little bit scary, but there are things that we can do that we can put in place so that we are still getting the tracking and the right optimization. And I want to just also kind of clarify that this is going to affect all ad platforms. This isn't just affecting Facebook. Facebook just happens to be the loudest <laughs> about this change. <laughs> <laughs> so Facebook is yelling loudest about it. And, and um, you know, so there's a lot of unknowns with this. We don't know how many people are going to opt out. We don't know, um, we, you know, we don't know uh, exactly how, you know, Facebook might feel after that. We do know for sure that some tracking will go away. Uh, some of the biggest changes that are going to happen with this change uh, is that the tracking pixel actions such as leads, add to carts, purchases will not will be underreported. Basically, they'll still be happening. You still are going to get per sales and leads and things like that from Apple devices, but we're not going to be reporting them in the ads manager area. The other thing that's going to happen with this change is that because the Facebook pixel isn't going to be learning as well, the types of people that opt in, the types of people that buy things, you know, down the road in the future, we're not going to have quite as good optimization. And some of that is going to be uh, remains to be seen. 
The retargeting is also going to be affected because if they've been to your website with an Apple iOS device and then we try and retarget them with an ad, we won't be able to because they're they aren't going to be tracked with that. And then there's going to be some uh, issues with the building of the audiences because we're not going to have as much of that data. We're still going to have data though. We're still going to have data from desktop uh, and Android devices and things like that. Definitely people who ha have apps, our uh, Facebook apps are going to be pretty affected by this, but uh, I find most SMBs are, are don't have an app with that. And I have a blog post to help uh, sort through some more of that and, and kind of some actions. So there are, you know, there's a lot of unknowns. Um, it, it's, it is rolling out soon. It may be rolling out in some areas, but the good news is the lead generation ads that happen on Facebook are not being affected by that. That is all contained within Facebook. So if you are just getting started, you may want to consider, you know, a lead generation ad because that will not be affected longer term. You're still going to get that tracking. We're still going to be able to do like things like, uh, you know, building audiences from people who have opted in and things like that. So, so there's some great things with that. Um, there's other ways to track too. We can we can do some other tracking that uh, will be available. So some things to do now, and this um, this is covered more in my in my blog post. But there's two-factor authorization. That's really a good step to take anyway. That's really more about um, something that Facebook's kind of forcing for advertisers. Domain verification is going to help signal to Facebook that you are a legitimate do domain, and that's going to be a good thing to do. And also uh, actually kind of mandatory if you're doing conversion ads. And then just make, making sure you're optimizing and kind of knowing what's going on. You can actually look at how many people are Apple users from the ads that you've got right now. So you can do a breakdown report, see, hey, how many Apple users do I have that are becoming leads currently? So you might kind of gauge where, where your reporting might be affected. And then use those lead generation ads and um, don't panic. That's my, that's always my, it's a good, that's a good thing for everything. Don't panic. <laughs> so I am going to recap my part and then we're going to turn it over to Rachel and she's going to talk more about the follow-up. But I really encourage you to go beyond the boosted post, those, use those lead generation and conversion ads, test the different images and targeting and make sure you're following up with your leads. That's a big thing because you wanna make sure you're maximizing your ad spend. And after all of this, if you are still not getting the results that you want from your Facebook ads, you may just be the picnic pants of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, out of all the examples you showed, I can relate most to the picnic pants. I, I just, I would you, be know, a you never know. You oh, never know when you're going to picnic. Friend. You never, you might just need to eat a sandwich at any time and you've got a table right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's also great if you have kids, because I, you know, I have a, um, a, a an almost two year old and yeah. Sometimes she'll sit on my lap and like, I, it, it always like cracks me up after, you know, after she'll sit on my lap and eat something. It's like, yeah. it's like, I'm the one, she's not messy. She's perfectly clean. And I'm the one covered in crumbs and ketchup. Uh, smears. So yeah, right. maybe I need the picnic pants when I'm feeding my baby. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, so I've got some a little freebie there for you, and then let's let's talk about following up because after all this work, we want to definitely make sure that we are following up with our leads because that's that's a huge thing. Yep, that's you know that's where the money is at the end of the day. And Andrea, I want to thank you so much. Don't go anywhere because we still have some questions. Thank yeah. you so much for uh, everything you've told us so far. This has been super insightful, and I have to say I'm so happy that we didn't touch your presentation very often in webinars. Uh, you know, the, the webinars we bring to you are brought to you by Visita. And we all, very often, you know, kind of take the presentation and add, you know, if you've been to our webinars before, you're probably familiar with, like, we have our own images with, like, the little miniature people. And I'm so happy we didn't touch your presentation because it was hilarious and you had the funniest, <laughs> funniest images. Um, so, yeah, that was great. That was super entertaining. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so let me uh, let me tell you guys a little bit more about uh, myself. So I'm Rachel uh, with the Visita team. I've been with Visita for uh, just over two years now. 
And um, I started at the beginning of the presentation, I told you guys that about 10 years ago, um, I had my own consulting business where uh, me and a couple of friends of mine from, back from college started a business where we were uh, kind of coaching small businesses, um, talking to them about Facebook ads, about online presence, you know, how they can make the most of this new, uh, back then new space. Um, and, you know, then I kind of moved over and more into the tech industry. And uh, when I when I kind of you know first started uh, getting familiar with Visita, it really clicked for me because I said yes, you know this is the kind of platform that is going to help people like my clients for my very first business. You know we invest so much in building these campaigns and testing them and optimizing them and getting the leads in. And then you know uh, like a few of you mentioned here in the comments, you know very often you get the leads and then you know it, that's not the end. That's just the very very beginning, the very beginning of the deal cycle. And Visita can really help you uh, with that. And that's what I want to talk a little bit more about today, just before we get to the uh, additional questions. So as Andrea said, you know, so many different call to actions. You're inviting people to sign up for your events, join your mailing list, uh, book a service, get a free consultation. Uh, the list does go on and on. Um, there, 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 if you guys are already using Visita, if you're a member of the Visita community, there are a few things you can already do with your Visita account. Um, and if you don't have a Visita account yet, I can tell you, I'll tell you all about how to, you can start a free account, a uh, free trial account today. Um, so let's move, let's move to the next slide. This is a great example of how you can use Visita uh, to capture leads um, in a way that really prevents them from kind of slipping away. You can lick, uh, one of the, uh, one of the things Visita offers, if you're, if some of you guys here aren't familiar with Visita, one of the um, kind of solutions that Visita offers is online scheduling where you know you really have a link where that people can you know click on your prospects can click on that link view the different services discover your services browse them and then go ahead and book them immediately without even picking up the phone so this is great for them because they get to book it immediately it's great for you because you don't get these phone calls you know hey can i come in on monday can i come in on tuesday super easy your availability is you know available online um, and people can see when you're available and go ahead and book and even pay for the service on the spot uh, so this is one way, great way to capture leads while using Visita. You use the, you have a unique link that goes to your uh, service menu. So these are just some examples here. One of them is, um, I think this example is like a massage therapist, and then there's another example here that's a music teacher. So just an example of what a service menu can look like. Uh, and then you know when someone can come here and learn about the kind of services and then go ahead and book them. Another option is to create a contact form, and these are these are completely customizable. Uh, so you can create create one of these with Visita and then link it to a Facebook campaign. Um, another another uh, example, and this is something I've seen a lot with a lot of uh, members of the uh, Visita community, is to run an online event, kind of like the one you're attending right now. So an online event or, or even an in-person event when circumstances allow it uh, with COVID and all. Uh, and you're really inviting people to go ahead and book a seat at a group event. It could be a free event, it could be a paid event, uh, directly from a Facebook campaign. And this is all stuff that you could do. These screens that I'm showing you, these are all within Visita. Um, and then this is kind of just like some insights of how you can use Visita as part of the lead capturing flow. But what's really interesting is, is, is this part. Um, as I mentioned, you know, lead capturing is just the very, very beginning. That's where the, the buyer journey starts. Um, and then you kind of get these leads, you know, sometimes they go into a spreadsheet, sometimes you just save them, you know, somewhere on your computer. Uh, and what I've seen work really well for so many small business owners is to have a CRM system, to have a contact management system. And that's exactly what Visita is. Visita will take the leads that you're working so hard to capture, put them in one place where you have a client card for every single lead and every single client, every single person you're working with within your business. And this is completely customizable. You know, you can add your fields. If you're a doctor, you can have fields like blood type and allergies. If you are a uh, roofer, you can have fields like, you know, property type or, you know, location and address. Uh, it's really completely customizable. You can change it. And then you can come back here and always view, you know, when did this person reach out to you? Uh, you know, did they ever buy anything? Did they pay? Did they owe you money? Did they ever just not show up for a meeting? It's all documented here. And the best part about it is that it's an, what I call an action ready environment. So you have the lead, it comes in and you can immediately follow up, immediately send a message, send a booking, send an invoice, and you can do all these things uh, from within Visita. So this is um, a really great example of how to kind of grab those leads, make sure they don't go anywhere, kind of keep them in the system, keep on nurturing them. 
Um, the next thing I want to show you is uh, what this experience looks like from your client side. So Visita isn't always, only an app for the business, it's also an app for your clients. It's kind of like your app for your clients. Uh, when you open your Visita account, you have your own you know, back office environment where you're managing your payments and your bookings and your uh, client records and all that back office stuff. And then you also have an app that you can share with your clients. So in this example, it's the massage there, the uh, Green Life Chinese Medicine. That's just my, that's my demo account that I use for all my presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, this is the app that, that uh, this is the client portal. Uh, that, you know, if, if I'm the business owner, I have, uh, you know, I'm the green life, uh, Chinese medicine, this is what I send my customers. And then they can log in here, you know, book, pay me, send me a file, you know, send me a message. And this is something they can access from any device 24-7. Uh, and this is really huge for small businesses because it, it kind of just gives, it's, it's really like having your own app. And it saves you that hassle of people calling, you know, asking you to resend document or, you know, you kind of calling people up, asking them to pay, it's all happening online, it's all automatic, it's all secure. Uh, so this, this is something I've seen really work really well uh, for so many different types of small businesses. Uh, one more thing I wanna show you here today is uh, the idea of nurturing. So, um, you know, as we mentioned before, not every single lead will convert into a deal. Uh, and even the ones that do convert into a deal, won't necessarily convert into um, repeat, like kind of like a recurring customer situation. And sometimes that involves a little bit more of an effort. You know, there's the nurturing, like Andrea mentioned before, a lot of Facebook activity can just be nurturing and retargeting and remarketing to existing contacts. So you can do the same thing with Invisita. You can create, you know, you have your CRM, you have your contacts, you can start sending regular updates via email and text message. So these are just some examples. These are actually uh, templates from within Visita. So what we do in Visita is we create a library of templates uh, for you guys to choose from. You know, you can customize them, you can change the image, you can change the text, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but we just kind of like to, to create, you know, some, some rough ideas that you can start with if you're not sure if you've ever sent an email campaign before, or, you know, you always find yourself kind of sitting in front of this blank screen and, you know, where do I even start? Uh, just some templates to kind of inspire you. And these are all with kind of built in with Ibisita and you can send these emails out and then, of course, come back and see, you know, stats like open rate and click rate um, and all that stuff. And, and this, uh, is, oh, this is huge because yeah. I love that. I mean, the other thing that I find people do is they have one offer, one ad, and then they say it doesn't work. Well, if you've got multiple, you're also testing multiple offers here because it's not just about testing the images, the audiences, testing different offers and having people work with you in different ways or different, you know, have different specials going on or things like that. That is huge. So I, I think that's it's a big, that's a big thing to be able to do. Yeah, this is good. This is really great for kind of staying in touch. Some of it can even be automated. I don't think we have time to get into it, but this is definitely something we can talk more about um, if you guys are interested in having like a follow-up discussion. Uh, if you're with, if you're uh, using Visita and have a Visita account and not sure how to leverage these capabilities, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to kind of show you around, help you learn how to do it. And if you're not familiar with Visita, if you don't have an account, uh, I recommend that you guys head over to visita.com. Uh, we have a free trial. You can start for 14 days. You don't even need to put in your credit card. Uh, just, you know, kind of go over to visita.com and start your free trial. Uh, we also have a uh, free demo that we do online. So if you wanted to have a conversation with a real person and talk to them about your business and what you're kind of looking for and get an idea of how Visita could help your business, um, you can go ahead and book a demo on our website. You can also just write, you know, I'm interested um, in a demo in the chat area, in the, in the questions or the comments, and I'll, uh, I'll connect you with someone that can speak to you on the phone. Um, I wanna thank you again, Andrea, for being here with us today. This has been so much fun. Uh, we really appreciate you and your time and you coming here to talk to us and uh, the folks at home, you know, members of our community. Um, yeah. and guys, as Andrea mentioned, she has a great blog. She has a great website. Go follow her on social media. I know I'm following her and I'm already enjoying the great content. <laughs> and uh, we actually, we push out some pretty, we push out some pretty awesome content ourselves. A lot of it is about Facebook and about small, marketing tactics and tips and best practices for small business owners. Um, so you can follow us on Facebook, Visita on Facebook, Visita on Instagram. Uh, we also have a blog, so you can check out our blog too. 
Uh, and I want to thank you guys for your time. This was so great. Uh, before you sign off, I do want to launch one last poll question where we're just going to ask you about future webinars and what kind of top other topics uh, you'd like to learn about. So as I launch that, uh, Andrea, was there anything you wanted to add just before we all sign off? Yeah, no, I think just, um, you know, just if you're new to Facebook ads, just, you know, think about it you know, holistically where it fits in your business, do that testing and, and just really kind of watch your numbers because people don't always know, like, was this even successful for me? And they're so trackable. When you track, you can make those better decisions. So I uh, hope you guys all get going or get started with it and, and have some fun. Cause it is fun. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrea. We have the last poll question live now, just asking you guys, um, you know, what else you would like to learn about. I see some of you wrote, um, you know, that you'd love to hear more about Visita and, and how to use it and have those kind of webinars. So if you have any, anything particular you'd like to learn about Visita, this is the time to just drop me a note in the comments uh, and we'll make sure to, um, you know, to kind of follow up on that. Uh, I do have, I said, I know they said this was the last one, but I do want to share another question uh, just about, you know, just uh, collecting some feedback and rating today's webinar so we can continue and produce great content for you guys. So if you have another second, just stay with me as I launch um, the final, final, this one's truly final uh, poll question for today. Um, and then again, I'm just going to say thank you again so much, Andrea. Uh, this webinar was brought to you for, by Visita, uh, the um, app that helps small business owners manage their time, money, clients, and marketing from one single app. If you're not familiar with Visita, uh, you guys can head over to visita.com, start your free trial, or just drop me a note in the comment section. Uh, let me know if you're interested in having a conversation with someone that can talk to you about how Visita uh, can kind of work together with your business, you know, how you could benefit from it. Um, and we would absolutely love to be in touch. And uh, I hope you guys stay safe. Have a great rest of your day uh, i hope we hear great news you know this year has been quite difficult i mean this past whatever it's already almost a year and a half mm -hmm. um so yeah always always looking out for uh some great news hopefully real soon uh stay safe you guys thanks again and we'll see you next time take care bye bye, bye, -bye.